Have you thought about growing your wealth but don't know how to start? Talk to Invest by Metricon. They make property investing easy. So for all your tomorrows, build your financial future today. Invest by Metricon. Build wealth. Build today. Welcome to the Smart Property Investment Show, the podcast by investors for investors. Oh, good day. How are you going? Phil Tarrant here. Hope you're well. Host of the Smart Property Investment Show. I'm also, for those of you that don't know, executive editor of real estate here at Momentum Media, which includes a whole bunch of real estate news and information platforms that you may or may not be familiar with. Uh, but I do some really cool stuff. I'm very fortunate that I get to chat with people right across the nation when it comes to uh, property and real estate. Uh, it's a real privileged position. And one of the great things I like to do, and one of the reasons why I like to host the Smart Property Investment Show is that I can give you a bit of an insight into a lot of those conversations that I have and uh, hopefully help you make more informed property decisions. Uh, what I do do every Thursday at 1.30, I do a live show uh, with Tom Panos, uh, and some of you may be familiar uh, with Tom. Uh, he heads up uh, Real Estate Gym. He's probably, well, he is uh, one of Australia's leading auctioneers as well, uh, does a lot of work uh, in the inner uh, west uh, and southwest of Sydney. Uh, you've probably seen him on TV. He writes significantly also for News Corp. You've read his stuff thought leader, influencer inside of real estate, mainly working with uh, real estate agents and property managers and the business of real estate, helping those people do what they do better. We do a live show every single Thursday, 1.30, uh, Facebook Live on Tom Panos and also on uh, real estate business Facebook pages called Real Estate Exposed. Uh, we go behind the scenes, behind the stories uh, and have those conversations around real estate that many people don't want to have or often can't have. Uh, we just give our views and interpretations of it and uh, highly uh, connected, and it's a pretty popular show, so I do enjoy doing it. Anyway, I thought as a special treat for Smart Property Investment this time around is that we would run it across the Smart Property Investment Podcast Network. We chat through property investing. We chat through our philosophies, myself and Tom, uh, as property investors, and the way we're seeing the markets going right now, and Tom makes a really good point and tune into it, is that um, uh, property used to be seasonally uh, on a seasonal cycle, and it's changed as a result of COVID now, seasonal property cycles is at the big and whims of health intervention and health orders. So uh, the nature of real estate has changed in Australia uh, and it will be for some time as long as we're in lockdowns until we can get vaccinated up and, and move out into pastures new. Tune in. I hope you enjoy it. Real Estate Exposed with Phil Tarrant and Tom Panos. Any feedback, let us know. Remember, uh, please keep those reviews coming on iTunes or wherever you listen to this podcast. The team get a real uh, kick out of it. Uh, any information also, you can get in touch with the team editor at smartpropertyinvestment.com.au. I trust you enjoy. See you again soon. Bye-bye. It looks as though we are live. Phil Tarrant, Tom Panos, Real Estate Exposed. Thursday afternoon, sun is shining. Lockdowns are easing, it would appear. Tom, what's going on? Well, Phil, you know, as we're shooting this video now, it's going on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Periscope, and of course, people can hear this on the REB podcast, and I also believe this episode is going to be on Smart Property Investment. Um, hello, Stan. Stan was our man on the ground last week in uh, in Canberra that was able to give us the scoop because he'd actually come out of a board meeting with the REI. Luke Maroney's coming on, and he's what is he saying? Bye, bye, bye. He's biased. He's a buyer's agent. Remember that. Alex Skipper, good to see you. Sean, good to see you. Uh, Luke, uh, good to see you. Phil, we've got three or four topics we're going to touch on today. And um, I've got to say to you, you know, as we're shooting this uh, this live stream video right now, you know, we've just had the announcement, of course, in New South Wales, we've now hit over the $1,000 $1, mark. I think I'm at an auction. We've hit over the 1,000. We've hit over the 1,000 people. The genie's out of the bottle, Phil. The genie's out of the bottle. Getting the genie back in the bottle is going to be hard. Paul Biller, one of the best real estate agents I know in the eastern suburbs, in your REB Top 100, I think he's number 40. Emily, good to see you. Michael from New Zealand. It's great. We've got this, you know, regular audience coming in and um, it's all happening. We've got some good feedback um, the other day as well. Someone texted you saying they like listening to us on a Saturday morning when on the Bay Run, I think it is. So it's good to know that people are, listening to this, watching this, tuning into this all over the place? I think, Phil, the combination of not just sitting there doing, you know, a training podcast or a personal development genre, 
one that we're actually, it's a bit like a magazine if you think about it. We're touching uh, the fringes of stories that some people uh, want us to go deeper in. But, Phil, we're going to start off with this story because News Corp uh, asked me for my forecast of spring and they said, when's the stock going to come on? You know, it's spring. But, Phil, I think we've got to accept it. The real estate behaviour model has been disrupted. It is no longer a seasonal market. It is now a public health order market. It is not based on the weather. It's not based on the season of the year. It's based on what the Chief Health Minister has as a recommendation, as a public health order, and I'm afraid to say we're not going to see the Super Saturday that we see normally happen late September. Well, no doubt, Tom. I'll tell you a read on this. You're a lot closer to us. We've been speaking about this for the last month. Your sentiments, um, pulling John McGrath's sentiments as well, that when this lockdown's over, it's going to be heady days in real estate. It's just when this lockdown is going to take place. But I don't mind your, your line of thought with this. And I was going to ask you, Tom, do you actually pen your own articles that I read in the, in the newspapers or is that just you verbalising it and someone else makes it sound good? Well, how's all that work, mate? I'm going to show you exactly because what you're going to see here is I use a thing called a Remarkable. I know it. Yeah, so I've got a Remarkable, which is a notepad, um, but it actually feels like not writing on glass, and I get my pencil out, which is that there, and um, I write it out. And, um, in fact, what you'll see here is that I actually did it last night. I've got a bottle of uh, red wine, and um, I went off and I wrote the story here, and then that story gets emailed from direct to the Remarkable to Susan, Susan actually types it out. From Susan, it hits a sub-editor at News Corp and then uh, they put it in. And I've got to tell you, they've told me that the stories that I've been uh, submitting to them have been getting the highest views of all contributors and the reason is that I speak and write in the same tone. And um, I don't use I don't use words that, you know, like instead of using the word consumption, I just say, listen, right? I just use straight out talking. Instead of talking about, a, you know, an oversupply of absorption, right, I just say there'll be too much stock on there. And, yeah. and my view, Phil, my view is this. I'm worried. I'm worried because I think there's a lot of sellers that haven't come out of the market since the middle of this year and then when the green light happens, that there's going to be all these listings and you're going to see realestate.com, domain.com, signboards everywhere. And that's going to be, for me, a buyer's paradise. And I know that you're a buyer and I think that you've waited this long and I'm out there, I'm out there, I'm looking as well, and I am closely having a look to see whether the oversupply of stock is going to be met by buyers because there is buyers out there. There's buyers out there right now. There might be a lockdown, but as Luke Moroni says, I like this one, always a buyer. That's a great thing. I'm always a buyer. I, I like that, right? Hey, how you going? Uh, Luke, Luke's, Luke's a good operator. How you going, Luke? Um, uh, you know what, Tom? Um, call you out on the fact that – so you're going to say there's, there's going to be an oversupply of properties. It's going to be more – there's going to be more properties than what there is buyers. Is that what you're saying when this happens? No. So so in real estate, there is a term called absorption rate. And absorption rate says, how many days would it take for all the stock on the market to get sucked in by the buyers? So when you've got a lot of stock, the absorption rate actually becomes lower, right? Because what actually happens is there's just more stock to get absorbed. What I'm saying is that if you've got, for instance, 500 buyers that are ready and able to pull the trigger. And at that time, let's assume you've got 250 properties. What I'm saying is if you waited for the 250 to become 500 properties, it would mean that all of a sudden the seller doesn't have as much power because they're competing against other properties. 
And what I'm worried about, Field, is let's assume that it's November, December, and the reason I'm coming to that conclusion, Phil, is the following. This is all a vaccination sprint at the moment. And if you actually have a look at what's going on, in England, the stadiums are full. Life has moved forward. So if you turn around and say our rollout, which was originally a stroll out, has now actually got pretty strong. Australia is doing extremely well in the last week in the vaccination stakes. So if you take that into assumption and we start looking that we're making progress, when there's a green light, and the market opens up, you're going to have a lot of listings on the market. But what I'm getting at is the buyers have always been there. The buyers haven't disappeared. They're saying there's no stock. I'm not sure whether there's going to be an increase of buyers to match the increase of supply. That's what I'm saying. Okay. So and therein lies the uh, the talent you have, Tom, when you're penning your pieces for News Corp, the, sim- the simplicity of real estate. And we chat a lot about this and, and this this particular uh, discussion today, Tom's going out on the Smart Property Investment podcast. Like real estate doesn't need to be hard. Real estate doesn't need to be complicated. And people that overcomplicate real estate do it unnecessarily because usually they're getting some benefit out of it. So what you're talking about there is basic supply and demand. So if you are a buyer and there's more properties on market, but the number of buyers doesn't go up, you have more choice. Therefore, there's not as much positive upwards pressure on prices so you might be able to get yourself pretty good buying during that period of time. That's what I'm waiting for, Tom. Yeah. In the property investment industry, there's countless stories of the one that got away. And it's always the same reason. To pay the deposit, they needed the settlement from another property to come through. And they waited. Realty Assist Australia knows that when you find the one, waiting isn't an option. That's why they have a same-day settlement fund advance service. There's no credit check, no application fees, just a single one-off fee to advance your equity. Visit realtyassist.com.au slash settlements now. Can I ask you, when you buy a home, out of everything, what's more important to you? The suburb, the position in the suburb, the quality of the property, like out of everything, what's the one thing you won't compromise on? Capital growth. That's what you after, isn't it? Yeah, I, mean, I don't really. Yeah, you know, the, the suburb, the property, the type of property, where it sits on a street, whether it's close to transport, that's that's all sort of you know quite tactical type of stuff. You know what I want? Why I invest in property, Tom? I don't do it because I like investing in property. I, I invest in property because I want to make money out of property. Now, how do you make money out of property? Number one, your property goes up in the value. You realise that equity growth at a point in time. Number two, you're generating cash out of it through the rent that you're generating through it. So that's positive, great. If it's negative, that's okay. You can use it as a tax position for a period of time. That's why I invest in property and that's how I invest in property. Now, looking at a particular property itself and and, and the specifics or particulars about it is pretty low down the, the pecking order. That said, to get capital growth to one of our listeners there that just wrote in. It's got to be in the right location at the right time for the right reason. And that's property. It's simple. And what's interesting, Phil, is I had the exact view that my views changed. And it's not that your view's wrong and mine's right. It's what it is, is at various cycles in people's life, they actually value one thing more than another. So example, I'm 54 years of age and um, I've got a reasonable asset portfolio. And the way I'm looking at life now is that, hey, the more growth I have, um, that's great, but I don't want to sacrifice lifestyle over growth because essentially what I'll be doing is passing on on my death as inheritance the growth of those properties. And that's a good thing to do, leave a legacy family, all of that. But at the same time, you don't want to spend the second half of your life compromising on your lifestyle for the purposes of growth, knowing you're not going to run out of money. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, mate. And what you're talking there is an inflection point. And I imagine every single property investor, hits it. you got a, you got a few years on me, Tom. I've got a, a still a little yeah. bit longer to go, but um, no doubt at some point in time. And it's probably not that far away either. What's that? 
Am I allowed to ask you your age or not? That's that's a bit rude, isn't it? How old do you reckon? Well, you're obviously younger than me because you've actually confirmed that and I've actually just given you my age when I actually said I'm 54. So I'm going to have a pun and say that you're definitely in your 40s and I'd say early to mid-40s. Mid-40s, Tom. Okay, so I've got nine years of you, right? So there's nine nine years of wisdom that I've got, which is sort of saying, which is sort of saying there comes a point where you're going to turn around and – you're going to say, hey, listen, I want to be able to, to have a, a great lifestyle. How am I going to have a great lifestyle? Being able to make money while I sleep. How do I make money while I sleep? Well, I can make it through growth and I can make it through income, but the problem with growth is I can't utilise it as much. Unless, of course, you're – and this is an incredible strategy. We might as well talk about it because it is going to smart property investment. The buyer's agent, Chris Gray. So can I tell you Chris Gray's strategy? So Chris Gray was on Sky News. He was also on The Renovator Show. He's a pretty high-profile buyer's agent, right? So Chris Gray's strategy is don't have a principal place of residence. He rents out. He, he rents and he lives in a beautiful home in the eastern suburbs and a home that he says he simply could not afford to buy if he had to buy it, but he can rent it. And then the way he looks at life is this. He wakes up on January 1 each year and looks at his property portfolio and says, if the market goes up 10% this year and I've got a property portfolio of $20 million, I've made $2 million on paper, right? $2 million on paper. That's the way that he, you know, operates. And the work he does, buyer's work and, you know, a bit of consultancy, that just gets him through for he loves having a big drink, which I was going to say. Chris, if you're watching, I'll make sure that you see this. Chris has struggled more than anyone else out of COVID because this guy here would go to the opening of an envelope, right? He just likes drinking, going out, networking, right? So uh, he's been one of the uh, the victims of COVID, right? Um, but, Phil, the point, the point I'm making is that at various phases in your life, people have got various strategies. One thing is for sure, the ideal capital growth, and high yield, that's gold. But I never oh, actually... It's, it's the holy grail to get and and you don't often get them both together. You normally get one or the other. And and I think as you go through an investing journey, you choose one over the other. And I think you're in a privileged position, Tom, that you can you can actually, at your age, you're not an old guy. I think you're, what are you, halfway through your adult life, right? We've spoken about this. Well, Phil, you, you, you get 4,000 weeks in life. I did a video on that. 4,000 weeks is what we get. If you're going to live into your 80s, you're at 4,000 weeks. I reckon I'm at around at 3,000 weeks. I reckon I've got 1,000 weeks left. So you're fortunate that you're in a position where you've started investing at the right time, and this is a really good message for our, our listeners there on Smart Property Investment. You're smart enough and privileged enough to have started investing at the right time of life, so at this point of life you can say, yeah, I don't know chase growth anymore. You've got a lot of it, and that's therefore giving you choice. And for many people, that is the ideal in property investment. You now have the privilege of choice, and you get to action that choice however you want to action it. You know, some people choose to action it by growing more for vanity or for, you know, generational legacy issues or for whatever reason, but your choice is to, okay, I'm going to enjoy my 1,000 weeks that I've got left. I reckon that's pretty sage and smart way to go about doing things. So the message is start investing early so – when you get to a point like you are at Tom, you get to make that choice. I think that you've done well there, mate. I've been blessed. I've had some incredible mentors along the way, and the best one was a guy I met in chemo. He changed my life, 45 years of age, uh, very successful in financial services, had a net worth of around $150 million. bucks. Uh, I was there on the, the last chemo session. He was told, they said, you're coming off chemo. We're not getting any results. That basically means that um, the end is near, right? They've run out of treatment options. And I'll never forget it, Phil. He said to me, mate, I really enjoyed your company because we were t- we'd been on the same cycle. He goes, I'm just going to give you a word of advice. He says, don't save your Grangers. Drink them. And next thing he says is, listen, the goal in life, is don't do what I did. 
and that is I'm leaving $150 million and I've lost a lot of months that I could have done things. Enjoy your life, mate. And uh, I've got to tell you, it was a profound, it, it had a, a profound impact. When I when he passed, Phil, I, I thought a lot about him and I'd, I'd, met, his, uh, I'd met his family, I'd met his, his whole family would come in and spend time with him at, uh, at treatment. And I just thought to myself, it would really, really suck to actually be in your final days and know that you knew this information of not wasting your time but you still didn't act on it, right? You still feel, man, I knew that I wasn't going to live forever. Um, why didn't I actually go off and start, you know, enjoying my life? And it's, it's had a profound impact. There have been so many times, Phil, where, you know, I think I've been a little bit more conservative um, in recent years on actually, you know, various projects, you know, investment for that because I'm constantly, I'm constantly having this, pros and cons analysis in my head. If I do that, it means this. But here's the price that you're going to pay for actually getting it. And I think it's a very, very good exercise because I think sometimes, Phil, oh, here's another story I want to share with you. A developer, a developer I, I have a, a, a takeaway coffee with, he said to me, mate, when I was building duplexes, I was making as much money and had a better life than when I entered the world of building blocks of units of 30 and 60 properties. You start entering in a world of having mass amount of staff. You have to have a lot of the government involved, right? The commissioner is involved now with the way properties are built. And he goes, so you really got to think to yourself, why am I doing what I'm doing in property? Does it serve my life goals or do I just think to myself, just do it, just keep growing? Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. I think you're fortunate that by experience but also through your journey with some of your health challenges, you've been able to view your life through a different lens that that often if people don't actually have those those things thrown at them, they don't get the opportunity to maybe rethink or recalibrate. But I think that's the way you're framing it, Tom, is is very sage. And, you know, for a lot of our listeners who are property investors, myself included, like when is enough enough is the question, you know, and and it is, um, was it Newton's second second law or whatever for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction? To your yeah. point, if I take this on, What's on what's in the other side? It's like a financial accounting. And we'll have a chat about some financial accounting. I was picking through the McGraw results uh, the other day, Tom. But, you know, if you put in a, an expense line in, a revenue line in, there's got to be an expense line somewhere. You know, everything balances out at some point. So I think property investors and, and people operating in real estate need to have their very comfortable and, and confident relationships with themselves to think that way. And I think it's super mature. And I think you'll make better decisions as a result of it. So, yeah, thanks for sharing that, Tom. That's good, mate. And the other, the other aspect in property investment that I never, ever thought about, Phil, that does matter to me, and I've begun to realize, talking to a lot of commercial agents, it's a major thing for their buyers, is depreciation. Mm. So depreciation, like if, you know, if you're buying a, let's call it a childcare, right? And let's assume that there's three million that's being spent to build the purpose-built center or servo or anything, right? You turn around. If you're getting depreciation of $200,000 a year, that's $200,000 that comes off your taxable income, right? For many people, all the rent, all the rent that is coming in on that asset is depreciated. It means you pay no tax on that rent. So there's a lot of factors, but you know what? I really do need to actually immerse myself in more property investment content. And I'm going to go off and do a bit of a binge on your Smart Property Investment Podcast. And by the way, during lockdown, podcast binging has gone through the roof. You know, a lot of people are, are binging. They, they don't sort of go from one podcast to the other. They just listen to like 20 episodes of the one podcast in one go, like a Netflix series. Yeah, I get a real kick out of it, Tom, and sometimes I need to – to pinch myself, you know me quite well, and we've known each other for many years. But you know, smart property investment, for example, uh, it's a podcast I do each week. Um, 
I don't know, and, and you, I know you get a lot of lot of uh, viewers and, and people connecting with your stuff. I guess, I don't know, 120, 130,000 people listen to that every single month. And I see that and I just think, well, wow, that's a lot of people who are all, and, and the good point of it, of it is all those people are investing in their own education to make better property investment decisions for the purpose of giving them a choice at a point in time when they want to, create a different life or slow down or move left or move right or whatever their choices is. But, you know, Australians by and large have such an opportunity, irrespective largely of how much income you earn, to take control of their financial future and create wealth. You don't need to be a bazillionaire, but being able to control a more favourable retirement. And a lot of us will work till 50, a lot of us work till 60, a lot of us will work till 70 and 75. You know, the... the, the um. Uh, the, the age of death in Australia keeps getting pushed out. I think I've got young children, likelihood that they'll live to 100 years old. You know, you've got to take control of your financial future. We spoke a few weeks ago while real estate, why real estate agents often either blow all their dough and don't end up with anything or they become sort of super rich because they're really smart investing in property. You know, teach your kids financial wealth, financial security advice, and I think they'll be okay. If you pass it on to the next generation, more than a big chunk of money and equity in a property, I think you're doing a much better job as a parent. Well I, well, I had during the week there was the, the, the passing of one of the legends of real estate. I actually did a video on it. When I was a young kid, it was my first job in real estate. The guy's name was John Owlsnet. Uh, you always remember your first employer if it ended up being a good experience. So, Phil, Chambers, Lemming, Padstow, the professionals, they're still there. Uh, they're making uh, 40, 40 sales a month and they're one of the greatest businesses in the last 40 years. They're always number one or two in their network. The Suns have taken it over, but John Alston had slipped um, and um, and I think he may have had another issue when he slipped uh, but passed away two or three nights ago. And I was uh, reflecting to his son, Todd, last night. I said, you know, your, your dad had a profound impact, you know, because I said I was 19 or 20 years of age and I had a Mitsubishi Magna when I was working as a salesman there. And I said, uh, John, I'm just going, I'm just going off to um, buy a new car. I'm going to be gone for two hours. So I was going to be upgrading. I wanted to upgrade to an Audi, right, from a Magna. And uh, Phil, yeah, John, John Alston had said to me, listen, do what you want to do. Then he said, I'm going to give you a word of advice. Don't spend your money at this age on stuff made out of metal because it goes down. Spend, spend your money on stuff that's made out of bricks because it goes up. And he goes, one day when you've got a lot of money and you don't care, then you can put your money towards the metal. The mark of financial success isn't about getting bigger, better, faster or more. To Paul, success is freedom. Freedom to spend more time with his family or giving back to his community or just more time to go surfing. Paul Glossop, an award-winning property buyer and regular guest on the Smart Property Investment Podcast, has taken the lessons he's learned building a multi-million dollar property portfolio and laid them out in his best-selling book, A Surfer's Guide to Property Investing. For a limited time, get your free copy of Paul's award-winning book and receive a roadmap for building both lifestyle and wealth through property investing. Grab your free copy today at purepropertyinvestment.com. Now, Phil, the last topic we're going to touch on today is um, a topic that uh, I've noticed it. I've noticed it anecdotally, and it has been validated uh, by data, and um, a lot of the real estate industry is tired. They're tired. Example, Melbourne, uh, seven out of the last eight weeks in lockdown. Last year, 17 weeks in a row in a hard lockdown. Hard lockdown means no property inspections, no listing presentations. We're talking homeschooling. We're talking being in a room, not being able to go outside apart from one hour of exercise a day and sitting there at a press conference each day to have a look at when will we be able to start doing something, right? So people are getting fatigued. People are getting tired. And uh, you swing across, you know, you know, various parts of the country now in lockdown. It appears that, you know, the place that has been, you know, pretty much unaffected now because, you know, even Byron Bay, I was talking to uh, my friends in Byron Bay, they're in a, you know, they're in a true lockdown there. All regional Australia's in a lockdown. People are getting tired 
and people are getting fatigued. And yet the reality is, Phil, there is no clear answer to this because the genie's out of the bottle, a thousand cases, right? So I can see that, you know, what the government is doing, this 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 balance. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just curious, like, Phil, what are you doing to um, um, cope yourself with the repetition of day in, day out, blurring itself? You know, you've got this blur. Often, often I'll, I'll forget, you know, what we've just come into a weekend or we're coming off a weekend, um, right? How, what about yourself? What are you doing? Um, well, routine's pretty important, Tom. Um, you're going into the office every day, right? Yep, yep, absolutely. So routine is important, and and w- whether or not it's COVID lockdown or or, or otherwise, you know, I'm a big uh, proponent of routine. Um, you know, I, I, I set set a particular way of operating, and I maintain it because it gives you quite a lot of control. So to be fair, Tom, um, you know, it's not not once I haven't even really thought about it until having this conversation. It's not once at this through this period of of this lockdown where I've gone, oh, this ain't too good, or you know, oh, this, 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 this is. I'm not happy about this, or I don't feel great about that. It, it, inherently, it's not the way I'm wired, um, and I think it's because I'm quite structured now. I go about doing stuff. I come into work every day, um, you know, and 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 I'm busy at work. I I cover a lot of ground. I'm involved in a whole bunch of different things. But I tell you what, so when I walk out that door and into the lift, I leave work at work, um, and then I have my home, and my home is my home, and I have a great home life. Um, a highly engaged, super connected. You know, we, we we do it well. So, you know, just having that that mechanism of routine is is absolutely critical. And I I'd sort of say to everyone, embrace some level of routine. You know, you know, don't just get stuck in the whole idea of a Groundhog Day. When some people will say, well, that isn't that what routine is? No, routine is structure. Um, it means that you can concentrate on the stuff that you need to concentrate when you need to concentrate on it. But I'm a probably pretty good at compartmentalizing stuff as well. You know, I only worry about things once. You know. Um, Whereas I think a lot of people worry about worrying about something and I think that could manifest itself in a very different way, which isn't positive to anything. So, you know, just worry about stuff when you need to worry about it. Yeah, worrying worrying about something is uh, like uh, walking around in the sun with an umbrella, right, uh, has, has, has no purpose, but you're just sitting there, oh, you know, but what if it rains? Um, but you did say something there profound and that is the minute you get in the lift, you know, you know that that's it. And I think for the majority of the people at the moment who are working at home, they need a circuit breaker to their day. They need to be able to sort of say, okay, that's a line in the sand. This is finished now. That was work. This is not work. And for me, Phil, it is a glass of red wine. So what happens is the last appointment, I get a glass of red wine and I say, that's it. That's the end of work. Um, but yesterday I was faced with the situation where I got the email coming in saying, don't forget the story's due tomorrow morning. So the story was written after I'd had a few glasses of red of wine. But Hence the better, better prose. But yesterday, I, I, you know, circle breaker is important. You need that interface between work and not work. Um and you can, you know, and that, that, that time is routine. Like that is part of your routine. And that's what I mean by routine. You need to have these, these triggers through your day to help you pivot and transition from different things. I, I, I know, uh, some, um, uh, medical people and, and mental health advocates would probably say that, you know, wine as a circuit breaker might not necessarily be the best thing, but, um, you know, it's, I, I think it's okay. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a way to sort of trigger from, from left to right. Uh, it works well, but. You know, uh, a lot of people are struggling right now. You know, you've got a pretty vibrant family life. You know, you're busy at home. You've got plenty of people around. There's plenty of things to engage you. I, I do have a lot of um, uh, sympathy and concerns for, uh, you know, those people who who live by themselves, um, who are quite isolated. Um, you know, it's, it's very challenging at the moment. And there's little things the government's been put in, like you know, buddy programs where you can have a buddy. Um, uh, I think that's really good. But, you know, I think we're all can do one thing is that reach out and connect with friends and colleagues and, and just stay, stay there and, and stay in tune and stay connected. And, you know, this thing will end, mate. Gold. Guys and girls, if you are going through a challenging time, difficult time, let me just say to you, reaching out versus going inward is the thing to do. Don't hide your feelings. Speak to people. 
There's plenty of telephone counselling support services that you can ring, Lifeline and what have you, speak to colleagues. But I think really most importantly, Phil, you've got to remember that old Buddhist, Buddhist philosophy and that is don't get attached to the now. It's not permanent. All you've got to do is open up and see what's going on overseas. People have moved on. They're working. Uh, most countries appear to be living with the virus. They've got to the number that allows them to live with the virus. So all I would say to people, if you are going through a, through a, through a difficult time, it's really, really important to understand things that Phil talked about, routine. Exercise is definitely a very important thing, getting outdoor um, and um, reaching out to people and, uh, and, 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 ha- and have a great attitude of gratitude because I've got to say, I, I, I've got to say, Phil, you know, someone, I overheard someone when I was picking up my coffee, one guy looked across at the bay run, he goes, mate, you wouldn't be dead for quids. If this is the worst thing about a lockdown, as he looked around the water, and then someone else said, yeah, things are pretty good here, but if you were living in a two-bedroom unit, in Liverpool with three kids and no balcony homeschooling without having an income coming in, it would be quite different. I it think you've got to be very, very different. Yeah. I think you've got to be able to fit, you know? Yeah, yeah. And and I think the, the thing, uh, just to conclude with this, Tom, it, it's okay to go, oh, this is a bit crap at the moment. It's okay to feel a bit crap about stuff, you know? that That is a human natural condition to think that. Um, it's just when that becomes persistent and and endearing uh, is when you probably need to start thinking about, um, you know, changing it in some way or another. And to your point, there's a lot of very good um, areas and, and and help forums and mechanisms for for, for, for helping you shape a more positive um, mental approach to stuff. So uh, if you start going down that pathway, you should really reach out. Bill Tarrant from REB and Smart Property Investment, Tom Panos from the Real Estate Gym, coming together every Thursday to jib-jabber away about, you know, real estate. COVID obviously is a big part of it. Property investment, things that we're just passionate about and things that we're living through each day. Bill, have a good week. You too, Tom. See you, mate. See you later. Bye-bye. See you, viewers. The information featured in this podcast is general in nature and does not take into consideration your financial situation or individual needs and should not be relied upon. Before making any investment, insurance, tax, property or financial planning decision, you should consult a licensed professional who can advise whether your decision is appropriate for you. Guests appearing on this podcast may have a commercial relationship with the companies mentioned. In the property investment industry, there's countless stories of the one that got away. And it's always the same reason. To pay the deposit, they needed the settlement from another property to come through. And they waited. Realty Assist Australia knows that when you find the one, waiting isn't an option. That's why they have a same-day settlement fund advance service. There's no credit check, no application fees, just a single one-off fee to advance your equity. Visit realtyassist.com.au slash settlements now.